The Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Teaching 312 The Master is again among you in fulfillment of his promise. He comes to entrust you with one more page of the book that he will bequeath as a present of love for his people. One more page, beloved disciples, that will be read, studied, and understood by future generations. Who else but I could have revealed to you that you are living the third era? Who but I could have told you that you are the people of Israel? This you know and have faith in it because I have taught you. You are these, those and the same in spirit and I come to reunite you in one family. I am the one who has formed your family and in the same home I have put spirits of different tribes. In the same family there are spirits of Levi, Simeon, Reuben, Judah, members of various tribes. And when there is peace and love in each other, and has begun in truth and in spirit to crystallize my desire as Father, the unification of all men. Homes and families of Israel, when you feel that the temptation appears in the bosom of your own, look in the solitude invoking me, telling me, Master, give us your strength, give us your sword, and do not say that as a father, I don't know my children. Do not allow that as a husband, I ignore my partner or how a companion does not know her husband. I will hear your prayer. I will defend you and I will make you come forward because this is my will. Today I have come for my friends and I have set off the sounding bell calling you to the congregation in this third era. Again, humanity will spiritually look at the gathered tribes forming the people of Israel. From the first era, I filled you with complacencies. The nations or countries in that era did not have. Wise men greater than Solomon envoys more enlightened than my prophets, women more beautiful and chaste than those of Israel, no more perfect men than my people. I poured into them the gift of wisdom, of inspiration, of beauty. I made the gifts of the Holy Spirit flourish, and at that time you knew that you were the chosen people of God. You knew that your Lord was with you and caressed you. You knew that I was your strong, and yet you became familiar with my gifts, with my caress, and with my presence. So my righteousness fell on you. The tribes of Israel are very numerous by spirit. I will select 12,000 from each and mark in their frontal, but the Israelite people are not specified to 144,000. The chosen people is infinite. The master taught you in the second era that many are called and few are chosen, and all the people of Israel will be called and from among them I will designate the 144,000. In all, I will pose peace, spirituality, and the principle of spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. The time is coming when men give more importance to the spirit and are disappointed by material science, which will make them fall into pain, disappointment, and lethargy. And when the people of Israel will arrive, awakening those who sleep, raising those who have fallen and raising the dead, 
in imitation of the voice of the Messiah, the one who said to Lazarus, get up and walk. When men are spiritualized, when their mind and your feelings soar, you will know what you never knew through science. Then you will rise with harmony, with brotherhood, with noble ideals to live in the kingdom that I have inspired in men. In the house of your father, there are many mansions, which are the infinite steps of the ladder that leads to perfection. From there, the spiritual world descends to manifest among you. You have questioned me many times from spirit to spirit why the existence of that immense number of stars, of those planets that shine on your world, and you have said to me, Master, are those worlds? And I tell you, the time has not come for me to fully reveal it to you. When man reaches spirituality, then great revelations will be made known to him, and he will be able to communicate with those beings beloved by my divinity, from spirit to spirit, and the communication of thought, and all the brothers will come. But from today, no, all worlds are inhabited for my creatures. Nothing is empty. All are blessed gardens and orchards cared for by Mary, the divine tenderness. The Holy Spirit will once again speak through your mouths of higher lessons, unknown to you and for humanity. But when, beloved people, when there is spirituality in you and consecration in your mission. I contemplate that the bread with which man is fed spiritually is not the bread of my table. Everything has been contaminated with the passage of time. Everything has become stained and impure in the heart and the hand of man. And I have come among you people, communicating myself through sinners like you, to give you a healthy and pure word in the depths of your wisdom. Do not superficially appreciate my word and my manifestations, because there is much imperfection in them. Rather, look for the meaning of my manifestation, and you will look at the sweet face of the Master. You will hear the echo of my voice that your spirits still remember. My apostles of the second era, whom you must imitate, implored that the Holy Spirit would descend upon their spirit and spoke under my inspiration. This is how I want you to prepare yourselves, people because the Spirit can speak for the flesh under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Watch over yourselves then. Watch that your understanding is not contaminated. Watch over your heart, so that you may receive that dew of grace that I send you, that crystalline water that must be kept in the source of your own being, so that you quench the thirst of the world. Do not fear the judgment of men, beloved people. Fear divine judgment if you, yourselves, increase more debt. Never be ashamed to meet in such humble places as these are, where you listen to my word. When they came to ask you, if these enclosures are your temples, in all truth, you will tell them no, that you are building your temple in the spirit. Some of you will be surprised at your revelations and others will scoff at your word. You will not feel offended by the mockery of your brothers if you bear in mind that whoever did it is because of their ignorance that does not let him contemplate the truth. 
you will have the compensation and those who penetrating among you to scrutinize you come out amazed at the inner peace that illuminates each one of my true disciples you on the other hand will never make fun of those who in the midst of their religious fanaticism or idolatries because more than look for me in maternal forms they adore me in them you will not need to point out to your brothers their mistakes seeking that they are corrected rather with this you would provoke their anger and exalt their fanaticism it will be enough for you to practice my doctrine with the spirituality that it demands so that you make the errors of your brothers come to the light of truth you will have to use a lot of patience great charity and true love if you want humanity to arrive ready to recognize the essence of my word and to pay true worship to it as well as to recognize in every human creature a brother spiritual and material in God who has told you that you are only spiritually brothers you will not have to break your understanding to understand that the same origin that you have spiritually is your material origin since everything has sprouted from me I also remind you that on earth all humanity comes from a single father and a single mother why then if your spiritual ties are eternal and your human ties so deep do you not love or recognize each other as brothers truly I tell you it is due to the lack of spiritual knowledge among men despite their religions the day that men through meditation drawing inspiration from the light that descends from consciousness to illuminate the brain and heart of man discover its essence in that day peace will begin to germinate among humanity also I tell you that once man is awakened to spiritual light there will be nothing and no one to stop him and on his way become a tireless seeker of truth you will never again lose your freedom of spirit achieved after much pain and many tears it will not be necessary for me to manifest myself throughout the world through spokespersons for the people to awake up and men free themselves from darkness those who believe that I have to raise my word and let everyone listen to it they are in error because that would mean that the brain of the man is the only means at my disposal to convey my message to the spirit of humanity and I am going to test you the truth of that ancient prophecy in which it was revealed to you that a time will come when the divine spirit would be poured out on all flesh and on all spirit truly I tell you that the time announced by the prophet is precisely this one that you live this era that begins and which you know as the third era the merit of this people will consist in taking this divine message from heart to heart and from region to region so that those who have awakened before the light of this new dawn receive in their hearts the seed of my word once the earth has been fertilized with the dew of my grace in that second era i only made myself heard from one people and it was only three years that i used to give the world my word i brought you the seed and taught my disciples how they should sow it once they learned from me i trusted them the vast lands for them to cultivate this is the merit of those sores who did not demand that their master stay with them for longer than it was written nor did they object telling him 
that there were still many towns and nations yet to know him. They knew that they had inherited the truth from their master and that it was enough for them to overcome the darkness, to convert the world and make that divine seed perpetrate itself in all human generations. Remove from your minds any erroneous ideal that you sometimes forge and just be specific to from what the first days I have been revealing my communication to you. Since you know that each of my words is a law and that all my law must be obeyed. Beloved people, your heart fills with satisfaction thinking that you are my disciples in this third era. Also, I tell you, never let vanity blind you, because if you fell into that weakness, even your consciousness you will ignore when she comes to claim your faults. Who does not begin by purifying and elevating her human life? She can aspire to rise spiritually, but because her steps will be false and her works will have no seed of truth. For this reason, see that sometimes in my lessons, I descend from spiritual teaching to counsel so that you conduct righteously within human life. I am speaking to the heart of man, exhorting him to regeneration, making him understand the damage that vices and evil do to the body that damage the spirit. I have told you, that the man who allows himself to be dominated by vice has forgotten that the spirit must not be defeated, has forgotten that true strength consists in destroying evil with virtue. That man, defeated by the flesh, has denigrated himself, has disrespected himself, has descended from his elevated condition of man to that of a poor coward to fight. Instead of bringing light, bread and wine to his home, that man carries shadows, pain and death, makes his cross heavy, that of his wife and that of his children, and hinders the spiritual journey of those around him. I have spoken to the heart of the woman, mother and wife who have not known how to keep their hearts clean and have been able to give their companions and children the warmth of tenderness and understanding. How could men and women elevate their spiritual lives if they have not previously corrected the great errors that exist in your human life? My work requires that my disciples know how to give witness with clarity and truth to the acts of their lives. I ask each one, do you have children? Well, have charity with them. If you could contemplate for a moment to those spirits, you will feel unworthy to call yourselves their parents. Do not give them bad examples. Be careful to do no scandal in front of children. I know at this time as never before, there are problems within marriages, problems that they only find one solution, distancing, separation. If this humanity had the necessary notion of spiritual knowledge, it will not make such serious mistakes because you will find in prayer and in spirituality the inspiration to solve the most difficult situations and overcome the toughest tests. My light reaches all hearts, the sad and the defeated, to encourage them. My strength is communicated to the weak so that they will soon rise up with an iron will to transform their dark and empty existence in a luminous life through knowledge, virtue, and spirituality. I want, disciples, that you all preach by example, that you do not prevacate, that you do not preach truth 
and you practice the opposite. That the fruit that you gather instead of being bitter is pleasant. People, do not forget, therefore, that you must first fulfill your life on earth so that later you know how to be fulfilled in my work. Before you continue lamenting your sorrows in the world, stop to meditate for a few moments so that you can find the cause of your afflictions. I grant you to search until you find the cause of your pain so that you can remedy it because it is up to you to prevent pain from entering your home. I assure you that you will not only find the cause of how much it makes you suffer, but at the same time, the way to remedy your ills will be revealed. My charity will descend on those who have known how to pray and meditate, and that charity will be in your spirit and in your body like balm. I will prove to you that the promised comforter has come to you to wipe away your tears and to return your pain in peace. Come to me, all of you who have a hidden pain in your heart. You carry hidden the pain that it has caused you a betrayal and your bitterness is very great because it has been a very dear being who has hurt you deeply. Come to meditate so that prayer enlightens you and you may know if at some time you are the cause that they betray you. Then prayer will help you to strengthen yourself in the ideal that you must forgive those who betray you in your love, in your faith, in your trust. Truly I tell you, the moment you grant your forgiveness to whoever has offended you, you will feel my peace and fullness because at that moment your spirit will have united with mine and I will extend my mantle to forgive and cover one and the other with my love. I am forging you for when the fight comes. Therefore, never think that your sufferings now are sterile. What do you want, people? You still need pain to show you its lessons. This time of crucible and teachings for your spirit will pass, but it will leave its seed of faith, of experience, of wisdom and strength in each of my disciples. Then the times of struggle will come when you will be persecuted, slandered, and mocked even by those who called themselves your friend. And with surprise, you will see that you will not falter, that no one will be able to cause you disappointment because you will have learned to forgive and to be understanding and indulgent to your brothers. I will bless my disciples every time they forgive and fill with blessings to those who have been forgiven by you. You are not alone in this world. Around you floats beings in infinite numbers that help and inspire you in all steps of your life. In order for you to receive that spiritual influence and that light, it is necessary that you pray so that you always become creditors to the help of those higher beings. Be sensitive to spiritual influences and you will not have to stumble along the way. The narrow path is the one that appears before your eyes, and it is necessary to watch and pray not to go out of its limits. I want to find you always in it, because those who come to me by that path, it will mean that they are clean of vice and falsehood. Do you want to enjoy the invisible sight as well as the influence of the spiritual beings of light? Do you also want to free yourselves from those who dwell in the shadows of its materialism and its confusion? Well, I tell you that the secret consists in leading a quiet, simple life and living with the love 
and cultivating the seed of virtue in your home. My blessings descends on all, but while some know how to receive it and take advantage of its benefits, others reject it, shedding all the grace that it contains. Those spiritual legions of which I have spoken are also part of my blessings that I send you, my messengers and servants. At the moment of receiving divine inspiration, rush to help their brothers who inhabit the earth, this planet turned by men into a valley of tears. Only my doctrine will be able to put you in contact with the spiritual world bringing you closer to each other as corresponds to all the children of the Lord who possessing the spirit cannot be distant from each other nor allow that matter is a barrier between those who inhabit the earth and those who are in spirit. Let my word continue to polish your hearts until you are truly sensitive to the pain of others. You will never be able to fulfill your spiritual mission with perfection until the fibers of your heart are felt. Do not delay in your preparation. Think that every second that passes is wrapped in woes of pain that exhale this humanity, your sister. When you arrive before the manifestation of my word, you presented to me the burden of your sufferings, your complaint, and you shed tears in abundance because you believe that no one on earth suffered as much as you. It was that your heart only lived for itself and your eyes were closed to any need or suffering of others. It was necessary that you listen to my word, which is an eternal source of truth and light so that the bandage of darkness that covered your pupils fell, letting you look at reality. And the truth is that your sufferings, despite being great, turn out to be small before you when you began to consider other peoples of the earth, through whom the war has passed, formed by hatred, ambitions, and revenge of man. Then you lowered your head in shame to tell me, Lord, forgive me. Today I recognize that in my disagreement, when the pain became bitter in my heart, I came to blaspheme, when I should have thanked you because my sufferings were incomparably less than those of other beings. It was my ignorance that made me be unjust in front of you. Today I understand my mistake. I ask your forgiveness of all my offenses and I beg you that everything I ask for me, now you bind, to pour it out on those who carry a burden immensely heavier than the one I was carrying. How different is your current way of praying if you compare it with the one you used before hearing this word? By what? Because it changed your way of feeling and interpreting the divine teachings. Now I tell you, disciples, do not stop or pretend to believe that to practice true charity, it is already enough to feel compassion, as you have done up to now. No, people, because there is still much to purify, to raise awareness. There is still a lot of selfishness that needs to be fought like weeds. There is a lot of coldness that is necessary to turn into spiritual warmth, so that at last, the feeling of love, which is the source where piety, charity, and all noble and high sentiments spring forth. Then you will be able to undertake tasks and missions that you will not feel capable of now, because you have the strength that emanates from true love that was still lacking. Now people, do you think that you should passively wait for the hour when your spirit lights up with that inspiration and your heart is filled with that ideal? Do you think that just by listening to my word 
you will be able to sensitize what is necessary in your fibers. No, people. At that same time that you are listening to my lessons, you have to go in search of those who suffer, to be in contact with pain, to taste the cup of bitterness of your brothers and fill with your senses misery, orphanhood, disgusting vices, illnesses that fill you with horror, the darknesses that overshadow troubled understandings, hunger, thirst, and the restitution of spirits. Only in this way will you be able to become teachers of those who suffer a lot in life. Because if you only prepare yourself through study of my word and prayers, when you want to face reality and try to console, convert, and heal, with sadness you will see that you are small in front of those who have suffered what you do not imagine, and that they rather, they could be your teachers for what they have suffered for what they have lived and experienced. Then your lips, they would have to be silent. And you might think that my doctrine is not consoling and strong enough to eliminate their sorrows to men and awaken in them faith and hope in my justice, in my forgiveness and in my love. Where can you practice the lessons you are receiving in order to prepare yourself? Opportunities abound in such form that if you know how to observe, you will be able to verify that not a day in your life passes without at least one occasion to do charity in any of the many ways in which it can be practiced. Through the gift of intuition of which I have made all men possessors, you will be able to discover many cases that are hidden in the secret of hearts, many tragedies that not only affect the earthly life of your brothers, but affect your spirit. How to penetrate the intimacy of those hearts without injuring them and without profaning their secrets. How to discover those hidden sorrows that darken the lives of your brothers. I have already told you, intuition that gift, that it is part of the spiritual sight and that will have full development in you through prayer. It will point out the way to calm the pain of each one of your fellow men. My peace be with you.